Hi, I'm Tamitha Scove with your solar storm forecast for the week of September 1st. This week finds us still feeling the after effects of three really big m class flares that you saw right there and the solar storms that were launched with them. This week we're beginning to calm down on those M flares, but what we're seeing now are some really big filaments that are traversing the sun and we're kind of watching them to see if they're going to erupt. We also are in the effect of this coronal hole right here, which is sending us some high speed wind, but more on that in a minute. First, let's switch to our M flare threat meter. You can see those big three M class flares that hit us there. But since then, we've actually dipped down below the sea floor and we just don't see anything on the horizon as of yet for some really big flares. Switching, however, to our storm index, you can see it was kind of quiet, and then bam, we had that first solar storm hit on the 27th, which gave us some really nice aurora that was seen clear down to like Colorado. But the speed of the storm was actually quite slow, so we never really made it up into storm levels. And then uh, on the 28th, we ended up getting an extra boost from a grazing solar storm passage, plus some high speed from that coral hole I just showed you, which finally boosted us up into uh, official storm levels and brightened up the aurora a little bit. And that has continued on through the 29th. So we've had some really great aurora shows uh, over the past few days. For example, we got reds down in Colorado and Wyoming. We got purples in Wisconsin and also in Scotland. We got greens and rainbow colors in a ton of places like Edmonton, Canada, as well as Ontario and Whistler. We also got greens and, and rainbow aurora in Alaska, in Fairbanks, and in Iceland, and also in Sweden. Now what's neat too is that we had this goldenrod kind of red colors as well in Tasmania and also in New Zealand for the Aurora Australis. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is stereo, it's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's stereo B staring at the sun from behind. And you can see there's actually quite a few active regions transiting the back of the disk right now, and not a lot is going on on the east limb, but you can see right there, boom. You see those eruptions? Those are from region 2144, and that should be coming back onto the Earth-facing disk in about four days. Now switching to science grade maps that show all of the active regions all over the sun, I'm gonna focus in on this region right here because this is what's going to be coming into Earth view in the next few days. You can see there's a lot of activity and a lot of new growth right around region 2144. Uh, there's been a couple of ejections from that region. So we do have uh, potential for flares to increase and uh, maybe some new solar storms after these regions rotate into view probably in about four or five days. Returning to the disk, you can see region 2146 is now moving off to the west limb. That was the source of a lot of our flare activity. We still have to contend with 2149, but it has since calmed down. And all these other regions, 2150, 51, and 52, and 53 are pretty quiet. And that's going to be the way it is for the next couple days until these other regions begin to rotate onto the disk at the very end of this week. Turning to your solar storm and aurora possibilities for this upcoming week, remember we are still feeling the after effects of the solar storm. We're kind of going through its wake, plus we've got some high speed wind. So expect over the next day or so to continue to have aurora possibilities. NOAA is getting about a 20% chance of a minor storm at high latitudes and about a 20% chance of being active conditions at mid latitudes. But that should continue to calm down over the course of the week, unless we have one of those uh, filaments that I talked about earlier erupt and then all of this of course goes out the window. Turning to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the next week, NOAA has lowered our M-class threat level to 20% uh, and I expect that to continue to decrease uh, well into the beginning of next week until those other regions that are on the backside rotate into view and we get a good look at them. So this week it looks like we're going to get a little bit of a reprieve, which is well deserved because I've talked to many aurora hunters and solar storm chasers and they are exhausted from being up till 4 in the morning shooting aurora until the sun comes up. So thank you for these beautiful pictures. Uh, please keep it going. We love it. But uh, things should calm down over the next few days so that you can sleep. There shouldn't be any problems with your GPS or or satellite services, everything should be nice, unless one of those filaments erupts, and then uh, we'll start this whole process over again. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.